In this video, I'm going to show you how to set your Scala as the audio device inside Ableton Live. This means that we'll be able to record inputs through the Scala into Ableton and listen to what's playing back from Ableton through either headphones or speakers connected to our Scala. Please make sure that you have your Scala connected to your computer via USB and powered on, and then open Ableton Live. Please open the preferences by going to Live and Preferences on a Mac, or Option and Preferences on a PC, and then select the Audio tab. On a Mac, ensure that Core Audio is set as the driver type, and then select your Scala as the audio input and output device. On a PC, set the driver type to ASIO or ASIO, and select Focusrite USB ASIO as the audio device. If you'd like to record at a different sample rate, then you can change that just here. You're also able to adjust the buffer size just here. Increasing or decreasing the buffer size in here can help you tackle issues that you may come up against during recording and mixing. The buffer size is the time that's given to your software to process and play back the contents of your session. And when I say the contents of your session, I mean the audio and MIDI tracks, plugins and effects in this session. The benefit of using a low buffer size is that you get a lower recording latency. In other words, you get less of a delay between what you're playing or singing and hearing it back in the headphones. The downside of using a low buffer size is that you give your software less time to process the contents of your session. And this can lead to audio dropouts and glitches on playback. The benefit of using a higher buffer size is that you give your software more time to process the content in your session, meaning that you're far less likely to experience audio dropouts and glitches on playback. The downside of setting a higher buffer size is that you get a higher recording latency. However, we'll be tackling the issue of recording latency by using something called direct monitoring, which we'll explain later if you choose to view the recording tutorials. For this reason, we recommend that you use a high buffer size like 512, which means that you're far less likely to experience audio dropouts and glitches when listening back to your audio than if you had a lower buffer size. Your Scarlet's now set up as the audio input and output device for Ableton Live. We'll now show you how to start creating music using your Scarlet inside Ableton.